That actually is. Um, oh, sweet! Yeah, I love my the archaeology lab. Uh, it's a place down in Boulder, uh, part of uh, the university there, um, and it's an amazing place. It's like the basement of this house that's right off campus, and it is full of goodies and all kinds of retro machines. Uh, ben Edwards donated a whole bunch of machines to them. So they pretty much everything under the sun. They've got like an Amstrad, that Amstrad console. They've got a Casio Loopy. They've got they've got an Apple III. Um, I don't know if they have a Lisa. They've got all kinds of amazing stuff. All right, more of my game or less Muzak. I can also try and trap my mic here. This is fun. Ah, man. There we go. I love the um, the fact that audio is like logarithmic scale and not linear. So when I turn it halfway down on OBS, it actually isn't half the perceived volume. Cool. And the song's over anyway. All right. Anywho. Um, so yeah, I uh, thought what I would do is uh, just to get going, uh, show off. I've been kind of already showing off Pico Gus already uh, in uh, Cubic Player here playing some mods, and um, I'm probably gonna just copyright strike for this song. Uh, Purple Motion has all his songs, uh, at least on YouTube, they get they get flagged for copyright. He allows them to get played, but um, they do get flagged. Um, so anywho, um, yeah, playing some mods here in um, Open Cubic Player. Uh, what I'll do is I'll show you the test bench that I am using. And this is a old uh, uh, motherboard out of a uh, Gateway 2000 machine. This is actually the very first ATX motherboard ever. It is an Intel design. It has a Pentium, 120 megahertz, uh, 64 megs of EDO RAM, uh, a Matrox Millennium graphics card, and of course, 
our old friend, the PicoGus. This is the one I've been developing all my stuff on. I have flashed its uh, EEPROM, or I guess it's flash. Uh, I don't know how many times. I haven't worn it out yet. It's still working. So I'm going to keep on uh, trucking along with it. It is currently flashed to Gus mode. That's why it is able to play uh, mods in, in Cubic Player. And I'm going to play a few DOS demos. And the DOS demos I'm going to play are probably going to be some ones from Orange. I love Orange. Most of Orange's mid-90s DOS demos are, um, they are Gus only. So uh, you have to have a real Gus or you have to have something like the Pico Gus instead. Um, and a few of their, a few of the, Orange mods are a few of the orange demos are kind of they're kind of picky actually. I've had a lot of problems with uh, X14 and television and things like that. Um, so actually, I'm gonna get started. I'm gonna play television. That's probably one of my most favorite uh, orange demos, uh, the track by Dune. So let's go to my DOS capture here, and this is my mods directory and TV. Let's play television by Orange. television by orange uh gonna go for another demo by orange uh probably my next favorite uh x14 this is another dos only demo uh this one crashes at the end um on pretty much well it it depends it freezes at the end and you have to hard reset your machine 
Um, and um, sometimes it freezes at a white screen. We'll see. Uh, fingers crossed. And the demo ends on a pinkish screen. <laughs> there should be an X14 logo here. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't on the machine. And it also happens this this way on a real uh, Gus as well. So this isn't Pico Gus's fault. I always like to see when I um, reproduce bad behavior in <laughs> that, that happens on my real Gus. So I know it's not my fault. So um, uh, actually this will start playing the song over again if you just let it sit at this page or it sit at this screen um, hit reset so uh, I think that's enough demos for now um, I'm gonna kind of switch gears and I'm gonna go ahead and start um, digging into game blaster um, something that was pointed out to me in one of the videos uh, probably my last video I posted to YouTube um, showing uh, off Tandy and uh, CMS slash Game Blaster support uh, was that 
the pitch of the audio for Game Blaster is too high. Uh, and that had something to do with the fact that the uh, library I was using used a lot of floating point math. And floating point math is just kills your performance on uh, the RP2040 microprocessor because there's no there's no FPU on it. So it's all uh, emulated in software and it is extremely slow. So I converted all the floating point math to fixed point math and I think I had a, a bug in it. Um, but kind of, oh, <laughs> kind of out of the blue, um, I'm glad that was not my fault that there were two of me. Um, so, um, the, um, kind of out of the blue on Macedon, uh, I follow Aaron Giles, um, who is kind of a legend of emulation. Uh, he used to work at, uh, at Lucasfilm games and then turn into LucasArts. Um, he made all the Macintosh ports for, uh, many of the, uh, LucasArts slash Lucasfilm adventure games. Um, he wrote YMFM. He, um, also has been creating a new emulator for LucasArts games called uh, Dream. And Dream has um, emulators that he wrote from scratch uh, for Square Wave based um, uh, sound cards like uh, Tandy and CMS. And I was really curious about that. And he kind of reached out out of the blue, uh, DM'd me on Mastodon and said, hey, would you be interested in uh, the code that I've written for this? And I had said, yeah, I would love to see it. Um, Dream is closed source, but he very graciously has uh, decided to release uh, the sound emulation code for Dream under a uh, BSD3 clause license, um, and he zipped it up and sent it to me. So we'll be taking a look at it. I'm really excited to dig into it. It also has some floating point stuff, so we'll see if that is going to be a problem. Uh, I think it's just the audio output. It's none of the actual math with uh, calculating delays or sample rates or anything like that. So uh, let's try it out. Uh, Deep Thaw asks, uh, what does Dream emulate? Uh, Dream emulates, it basically emulates DOS machines. Um, it runs on Windows and has just recently been ported to uh, Mac OS and Linux as well. Um, and the first versions of it uh, emulate enough of a DOS machine to perfectly run um, LucasArts games. And it's not based on DOSBox, it's his own implementation. And it's pretty amazing. The fidelity is, is absolutely incredible. Uh, you think you, he likes to think of it of, and like instead of using like Scum VM, it's not a virtual machine. It, it tries to reproduce exactly how uh, the games were back in the 90s. Um, and it make, it's a bit of a more of an out of the easy out of the box experience than uh, say uh, DOSBox is, for example. Uh, yeah, thanks for linking that uh, 48k RAM. So uh, let's kind of show what CMS support uh, is like. So if I run PGUS in it, it's in DOS mode. Uh, I'll go ahead and flash it to use uh, CMS mode instead. All right, so it's running CMS. Um, and let's try and run uh, Indiana Jones and the uh, uh, Last Crusade. This is a good one. Uh, it's, yeah, it's G. So it sounds okay, but the pitch is too high. So that's an example of it. And um, just to compare, I found a video on YouTube of um, of it playing, and you can definitely tell it's it's high. So if I start playing this, hopefully it'll show up, the audio will show up on the stream. It's 
so it's ever so slightly lower pitched. So, yeah, that's kind of what we're going to aim for. Um, so, let's um, let's see and uh, let's start hacking. Uh, so, <laughs> six semitones too high. Um, that's, um, okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I have bad pitch. Um, I can play instruments, but... I have terrible pitch for some reason, so I sounding out a song I already know is is almost impossible for me. So I had no idea it was off until I posted the video, and all kinds of people were saying, "Yeah, it's it's high, it's it's off." <laughs> um, well, actually, yeah, that number could help in debugging. Um, so let me switch to uh, my desktop. Okay, and let's increase my. Uh, let me know if this is readable at all. So the um, this is um, the square wave code from Aaron Giles. Um, and uh, as you can see, there's a very nice um, uh, BSD3 clause license on the, on the front of this. So this is super cool. Um, it's uh, C++. Um, so the, hopefully it will be fast enough. Um, because the issue with a, a lot of code that if you just compile it out of the box um, on the RP2040 is, say, for example, uh, function calls. Uh, the fu overhead of a function call is like 1.2 milliseconds. Um, and that is an eternity. Uh, even on the ISA bus, which is extremely slow, having to uh, hold uh, IO channel ready um, low for that long, um, it can cause performance issues uh, on your ISA bus. Say, for example, if your VGA card is also on the ISA bus, um, it can cause low frame rates. Um, and I want PicoGus to be a good ISA bus citizen. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, it is an incredibly long time for a function call overhead. Um, and then if you're writing C++ and if you have a virtual function call, it's absolutely astronomical. I, I, I don't remember the last time I instrumented it. Um, anytime you have a virtual function call overhead, it's it's it, it's 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 terrible. It, there's it, it's the absolute worst. But fortunately, um, from looking at Aaron Giles's code, um, it should be very performant as long as I can uh, change these floats to something like uh, in sixteen or something like that. So um, they're square waves. I don't have to have like super ultra. Uh, absolutely enormous dynamic range it's it's emulating a square waves this sound card so it, it's floats are total overkill so i'm gonna go ahead and change that to um, uh, sine 16 bits um so kind of to give you all an overview of how uh, the pico gust source is architected um everything is compiled with um or that is made with uh, cmake and there's these different uh, project types. Uh, so when I am configuring uh, CMake, I set the project type uh, when I'm building the CMake project, um, and it does all kinds of stuff to uh, bring in all the source code files and things like that to uh, for what mode it's in. So like here's, for example, here's uh, when it's a project type Gus. This is probably the heaviest duty one because there's a whole bunch of stuff that comes in. I've hacked on it the most. Um, there's a whole bunch of uh, definitions um, that I turn on and off when I am ensuring that I'm not breaking my old code, or if I'm doing something experimental, I can just if def it out. Um, but then if we go down, uh, there's OPL. This is OPL2 slash adlib emulation. Uh, MPU 401 is kind of an interesting um, thing because instead of being a sound card, it is a MIDI card. It outputs MIDI data over the UART instead of audio data over I squared S. Um, someday, I would love to be able to run these in parallel, um, have an MPU 401 um, at, at the same time as like emulating a sound blaster. Um, that would be ideal. Uh, I would love to be able to do that. And I think there's enough horsepower in the RP2040 to be able to do this. So we'll see uh, maybe in the future. I, I really still want to get to it. 
And uh, now we're going to get to the most recent ones, uh, which are Tandy and CMS. Um, Tandy is using uh, a project called MU76489. Uh, that's named after the sound, the original sound chip that was in uh, the Tandy machines and the PC Junior. And um, it's from the same project, actually, uh, that the OPL. OPL uses uh, EMU8950 and MU76489 is from the same project. Um, it's from a, a VGM uh, playing uh, project. Uh, VGM are video game music files, and uh, they're kind of a dump of uh, the data that is used, just the bare minimum of the data that, that is needed to play music from video games or other kind of dumps. And I'm actually going to be using some VGM files to test things out as uh, I'm going to be iterating here. Hopefully I get to the point. Hopefully we get to the point where I actually can hear something. Uh, so yeah, anyway, CMS. Um, CMS, I'm using the uh, emulator SAA 1099. That is from uh, the main project. So this is from MAME, uh, from the MAME source. Uh, MAME is kind of assumes that you're running on a machine that is pretty beefy and you have a floating point unit. Uh, so there were a whole bunch of things that I had to do to uh, change from floating point to, um, to fixed point. And to be honest, it's been a while, so I don't remember exactly what I did. I have a feeling like, for example, like these dividing the master clocks by, by these powers of two, I have a feeling that's that's probably something like that uh, because these are some of the frequencies that it generates. Um, and likewise, uh, there's things like, um, yeah, it, yeah, this is all kind of really kind of... Uh, it's kind of forward to me again because it's been so long since I've looked at this code. So actually, I feel a little bit more confident about bringing in Aaron Giles's code and adapting that versus this and trying to figure out what is wrong with this because diving into this is like, I really have no clue what <laughs> what this is about here. So um, here's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to start off and just hack it in. So um, it's just going to be called square.cpp. This is the CPP file. And um, CMS play, this is, um, there's various modules inside, um, um, or, or files that, that are basically uh, responsible for taking the data, um, or there's two, there's two parts. Uh, picogus.cpp is responsible for all the bus. So anytime an event comes in from the bus um, that I'm interested in, that's on an address set, it's like, okay, this is on the CMS port. I need to respond to it. And I call functions inside the emulation code for whatever sound chip I'm emulating at the time. Um, and then the CMS play then is kind of the, the consumer of that. So it periodically calls the audio rendering function inside whatever it is. Um, so I'm gonna have to change uh, picogus.cpp to use the interface that Aaron Giles's code needs and also change CMS play uh, to consume it as well. And I have a feeling that on the on the consuming part, that's where I'm gonna have to be uh, adapting his code from floats over to fixed point. So let's see how that goes. Um, so starting from here, I believe these are the only changes I need to make in my CMake list is to compile square.cpp. Um, CMS, CMS play is going to stay the same. Um, I am going to be using UART. Uh, this here is um, a terminal, terminal emulator that is connected to, um, I'm gonna see if I can make the font bigger so y'all can see it better. Can I change the size? Zero, oh, that's lovely. That should be better. All right, cool. Yeah, so um, I'll be able to print debugging statements uh, to the serial console. I try and do it as little as possible because even just writing um, a character um, to the serial port is enough to throw off timing. Um, during audio rendering, you've got a little bit of leeway because it's buffered, but anything having to interact with the ISA bus, that can really throw things off. So I'll try and do it as sparingly as possible. Lots of just uh, put char like individual characters just to be as efficient as possible. Okay, so let's dive into uh, pgus picogus.cpp. 
And nice, what I'm going to be doing here is basically looking for any time I have an if def sound CMS. That's any time that I have code that's specific to CMS. So that's a good hint that I'm going to have to change this from the SAA 1099 emulator uh, over to Aaron Giles' uh, emulator instead. Um, so this, uh, I apologize for any C++ experts. Um, I know Abilanon is is a very well versed C++ uh, person. This is I, this is kind of an unholy mix between C and C++. Um, so say for example, like here, uh, I, I define play CMS so it can find it inside my uh, CMS play .c, .c file or CPP file. Um, so it's kind of in the name of both efficiency and me just being lazy. <laughs> okay, uh, so let's uh, square dot h. Uh, this SAA twenty nine device is going to be different. Uh, CMS detect. I'm going to keep the same. Uh, the detection is handled within the Pico Gus code, uh, and the way that uh, kind of what happens is to detect a, the CMS, it writes to a certain register on the on the card, and then it reads it back. And that's not on the SAA SAA chips themselves. The SAA chips are pretty dumb. Uh, it's an actual register uh, on the Sound Blaster or Game Blaster. So I have to emulate that in my code. Um, so that it's just it's just holding a value. So I'm going to keep CMS detect this SAA 1099 device. That's definitely something we're going to have to change. So I'll get back to this later once I dive into the square.h to kind of see what kind of the handle of this is, if it's going to be a pointer to a C++ object uh, instance or, or what. We'll, we'll see when we get there. Yeah, see with, see with classes. Yeah, exactly. Uh, classes are just structs. I basically treat classes as structs that have uh, have functions in them, and uh, public everything's public. I'm the only one who's hacking on this code. Um, Abilanon asks why there are two SAA 1099 devices, um, and that's because on the Game Blaster and Sound Blaster cards, uh, to get stereo, oh, actually it is a stereo. It, the chips are themselves stereo, uh, but there are two chips on them. Uh, to double the number of voices. So there's literally two physical SAA chips on, on the board. So this uh, the emulator as it as it's implemented in MAME, um, because MAME is it tries to be very generic because like say you've got an arcade machine that has an SAA chip and only has one, it just emulates one chip at a time. But it lets you just you know in, uh, create multiple ones and talk to them and and render the, render from both of them in turn. Now I don't know exactly for sure if Aaron Giles's code makes the assumption that there's going to be two or not. Um, we'll see. Uh, let's see see what we where we get when we get there. Okay, uh, let's look for more sound CMS stuff. Uh, this is stuff that is not important that has to do with um, pgus init and how it uh, knows what mode it's in when you run pgus init.exe on the command line. Uh, likewise, sound CMS for this base port. Okay, so here is kind of where the magic happens. Uh, this right here is inside this function uh, called handle IOW. And on the ISA bus, there are basically two types of bus events that I'm interested in um, most of the time uh, with regards to programmed IO. And that's outside of IRQs and DMA and stuff like that. That's where things get really hairy. Um, Fortunately, uh, the CMS is just programmed I.O. only, which it makes my life a lot easier. Uh, but there's two things. There's I.O.W., which is I.O. write, and there's I.O.R., which is I.O. read. Um, and that I.O. write is from the uh, perspective of the computer itself. So this is when I'm um, writing to a, um, actually, yeah, I'm writing a value um, to the uh, ISA card. So mostly this is going to be either sending data to the uh, port that is used for detecting the card and also sending anything that ha that's note data or anything like that. So this is where we're going to be writing to um, the emulation code. So in this case, there are, like here is the auto detect ports. So this port minus base port, the normal base port is 220. 
So at 220 hex, 221, 222, 223, um, and then 6 and 7 are kind of special. And th this part I won't have to touch. Whereas here, um, so at 0 and 1, that's how we write to um, the SAA, the first SAA chip, and on ports 2 and 3, that's how we write to the second SAA chip. Um, and there's basically, there's two things. There's, uh, you can write control um, commands to it, and you can write data. So it's probably like um, you stuff data into a register, and then you write a command to that saying, do this thing based on what I've just written to the data register. And it's just simple 8-bit values. Um, so here, like IOW read, um, that's data coming in from the programmed IO on the RP2040. And uh, I just and it with 0xff because it's just an 8-bit value. And uh, I already know what port it's from because the port is uh, coming in as another part of IOW read. Um, the data just comes in 32 bits at a time, and the lower 8 bits are the 8 bits of data that are coming in from the ISA bus. So these here I will have to change. And these things here, this IO weight, this is stuff that is part of uh, my ISA bus handling code. There's two types of um, events I can basically handle um, on the ISA bus. Stuff I can handle right away, uh, there's no delay, and um, I don't have to lower IO channel ready. IO channel ready on the ISA bus basically just halts the world. and the card is basically saying, hold on, wait, I've got stuff to do. I can't uh, I can't deal with anything else right now. Just stop the bus. And it literally just stops all activity on the ASA bus. Uh, the clock is still going, um, but the computer is just going to wait for the card to say, okay, I'm ready now. So uh, anytime where I do this PIO SM put, this is putting data onto uh, the PIO block on the RP2040, which then talks to the ISA bus. And it's basically saying, wait, okay, just hold on a second. Um, now, later on, if I wanted to uh, optimize things, I could tell it to not wait. But just kind of belt and suspenders, um, pretty much anything using CMS is going to be pretty slow. It's designed for slow machines. So if I'm holding up the ISA bus, it's not really the end of the world because this is software that's written for old machines. It's not written for Pentium. It's written for uh, an XT or a 286 or something like that. So it's not really a problem. So just to be dumb, I was like, yeah, just wait for everything. Uh, later on, I might tell it to not wait uh, if I look at the code and make sure it uh, can respond in time uh, because each ISA bus event has a certain amount of time that it can happen in if you don't mess with the IO channel ready uh, signal. Um, so if I know it's going to be done during that time, I can tell it not to wait. But anyway, I'm just going to tell it to wait. So I'll leave that stuff alone. And uh, now what I'm going to do is now there's the IOR. And IOR is um, pretty much any time I'm reading anything from IOR, I'm going to also set IO, IO weight as well. Um, so here's uh, some CMS auto detect stuff. Um, and there's also more CMS auto detect stuff. So this is all my code. Uh, the CMS emulators are, it's just write only. I'm just writing data to it and I can't read its state uh, from the computer. Uh, the computer is, it's just kind of a black box. You're just sending it note stuff and sound's gonna come out of it. Um, and so the only kind of stuff that has, the computer is gonna be able to read is having to do with auto detecting it. So uh, that's what this code is. I don't have to touch any of this. Um, here is some of the setup code for creating these SAA1089 devices. And it looks like I'm using new, so this is C++-ish. Um, this right here is some kind of, it's like a magic, um, I believe it's like 7.159 megahertz, which is based off the NTSC color burst frequency, which is present on the ISA bus. Um, I think it's used to drive like a, a lot of things it was used to drive the frequency of the SAA 1099. Uh, it's used to drive uh, like the composite output on CGA cards. Uh, there's, so you'll see this number crop up from time to time when you're dealing with stuff on the ISA bus, especially on older stuff. Um, so th these are going to have to change. 
and we'll get into this in just a second. Um, actually, well, let's get, go ahead and get to it right now. The RP2040 is a dual core micro microprocessor um, or microcontroller. Um, so pretty much I, the way I have it is the first core is used for anything that, that touches the ISA bus. Um, so reacting to ISA bus events, I will need to do it as quickly as possible. So I dedicate one core just to be just to handling that. So any pretty much anything you see in this picogus.cpp happens inside uh, the first core. Um, the second core is used for uh, anything having to do with audio. Um, so that's like maintaining the uh, audio buffer and rendering to it and pushing data out of that buffer um, into the I, I squared s. Uh, DAC that's on the Pico Gus. So um, what happens here is uh, this is a function pointer to uh, a function that it that is in uh, CMS play .cpp called play CMS, and uh, that's something else that we're going to be taking a look at pretty soon. And we have wrapped around back to the front of the top of the uh, the file. So uh, let's take a look at CMS play. Um, so there's a lot of boiler, boiler, boiler plate in this. It has to do with um, the I squared S stuff. Um, so a lot of this is copy and pasted. If you look at any of the play files in the Pico Gus uh, source code, it's going to be almost exactly the same. Um, so like stuff like here, I'm almost certain I'm going to have to change to square.h. And you can actually see here uh, some remnants of me using a different um, SAA emulator uh, called SAA Sound. Um, and I think I stopped using it um, either because it was too slow or the accuracy wasn't good. I don't remember exactly why. Um, so you'll see stuff like this around, just stuff commented out, and that's that's what that that's what that's from. I'll go ahead and comment that out. And once we know what um, uh, Aaron's code wants, then we'll we'll look into that. Uh, okay, so this is all about. Uh, setting up the buffers. This is uh, the I squared S configuration, setting it up. This is connecting the I squared S um, consumer to the producer of the audio data. And this right here is where we had that function pointer to, which actually gets launched on the uh, second core. Um, so right here, this SAA01 device start, stop that. Um, we might have to do something similar. Um, and also, uh, buffers, the way different code expects your buffers to be uh, made differs quite a bit. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this as it is. Uh, I'll have two buffers, uh, one for each chip. And um, I'm going to leave this here, and we can hack around with that, and hopefully we don't have to touch too much of it. Um, as you can see, it's, uh, a, it's a signed 16-bit value. So CD quality audio, 44.1 kilohertz. Um, I think it sounds pretty great. And uh, it does the job. And um, a lot of this stuff here, you'll see some put chars. This is me uh, putting some debugging code in uh, to show up on the serial console here. And um, so here is some stuff where it looks like here, um, we're basically telling it render some stuff into these buffers. And here we're just doing some kind of dumb mixing of those two. We're just um, adding it, adding them together. So uh, I'm probably going to have to change this. We'll see if these buffers are any different. So, and yeah, OK. So I think now we actually have to start looking into um, kind of what the interface here uh, or Aaron's code is going to be. Uh, let's take a look at square.h. So he has a few generators in here. Uh, the first one is for a PC speaker, which actually I'm kind of interested in implementing. Um, the reason for that is because some Tandy music expects to be able to be mixed with the PC speaker. Um, I'm not exactly sure how common uh, programs are that use it, but uh, it was raised to me, I think, on by someone on the Vogons forum or, or something like that. Um, because, like, say, for example, um, there are hardware uh, boards that use um, the Tandy, uh, Tandy chips or Tandy chip, and you can um, 
pipe in your PC speaker into it uh, so it can mix them together. So this might be something I might want to might want to keep around and take a look at. Uh, taking a look at it just very briefly, it kind of makes some assumptions that it's being used the way um, LucasArts games use the PC speaker. Uh, it uses the, the PIT, the programmable inter interval timer on the PC to send square waves. And like you can't just bit bang to it like uh, like sampled audio like you can sometimes uh, with the PC speaker. So uh, it, may, it may or may not we'll do what we want, but something to think about in the future. Uh, likewise, uh, there's the Tandy generator. I'm going to try the Tandy generator uh, later at some point. I'm not 100% happy with the way T Tandy emulation works. Uh, say, for example, at the beginning of Maniac Mansion, there's a, a meteor that comes in and uh, it makes a crash sound and it sounds strange uh, on the Pico Gus. And uh, maybe this one will sound better. I, I assume, given that uh, Dream was written to emulate uh, Lucasfilm adventure games, that it's probably going to be more accurate than whatever random emulator I'm using. And now we get into the interesting stuff. So, uh, right, so right here, this class implements a SAA 1089 sound chip emulation. Two of these are present on the CMS slash Game Blaster. So that's sending me the hint that I'm probably going to have to instantiate two of these, um, given that it's an SAA 1099 generator. It's not called a CMS generator, Game Blaster generator. This is like a generator for a single SAA 1099. Um, I don't have any of this code that uses this. Um, so it's kind of how I'm supposed to use it. I got a few hints from him, but um, I don't have an example to go off of. So I'm kind of flying blind here a little bit. So we'll we'll see what uh, what uh, what we can do about that. Okay, so so far so good. I'm only seeing um, uh, fixed point numbers. I'm not seeing any floats. That is awesome. Uh, so, there's these, there's basically the SA99 has uh, voices for square waves and it also has uh, noises, uh, noise generator, just white noise. Um, and there's also things for envelopes, all ints and uints. I am very happy to see those. And it looks like here's what we want, they, how they want you to do it. Um, so there's a, there's a constructor uh, that we have to use. It doesn't take any arguments, so we can just construct it, which is great. Um, it looks like process event how that is, um, there's probably going to be, uh, the reg num is probably going to be zero or one based on whether we're writing data or writing to the control register. Uh, we'll see, we'll, we'll take a look at the implementation to do that. And then we see this, we see generate frames and this has a float. And that is making me a little antsy because I see a float and I'm think, thinking, uh oh, I'm going to have to be doing stuff. Now, I'm a little bit um, tempted to try it with the floats because if there really isn't much math being done on them and it's just numbers, um, maybe it'll be fast enough. I don't have my hopes up, but I would like to at least get some something resembling sound out of this before I start hacking these floats to uh, to you know decimals or, or uh, you know integers. So um, let's. I'm tempted to leave these floats in just to just to see. I'll probably, um, when I'm consuming these frames, uh, yeah, I'll have to loop through every sample and convert those floats to uh, signed integers anyway. That kind of, I don't like that. Um, anytime I have to loop through all the sound samples, um, you know, that, yeah, I, I kind of, I don't know. I, I'm on the fence. I kind of want to, don't want to have this stream going that much longer. Uh, so I kind of want to just just send it, just <laughs> see what happens with these floats. So let's try it. Um, there's a gain, so uh, there's probably going to be a multiplying times the gain. Uh, however, multiplying times a float. Yeah, I I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of seeing this falling apart. Um, maybe we can just take that take that gain uh, multiplier out for now. Uh, yeah, I might do that. Okay, let, let's try that. Let's try rendering to floats and uh, comment out that gain so we're not multiplying times a float and um, convert it and see if we get some, anything resembling sound on it. Uh, I, I don't know. Let's try it. It, it might, it, it may or may not work. I don't know. Um, so let's, um, let's go. Actually, I'm going to play some music. I'm kind of blinded by the silence here. 
And of course I'm messing around with my OBS overlay. Let's play some nice quiet music. Oh, it's because you're not a Gus. <laughs> Hold on one second. Da, 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 da. Let's make you a Gus. Now you're a Gus. Much better. Okay. So these are just, this is like my old mods directory from the 90s. So it's just like, it's random stuff. So there's going to be, the quality is going to be very variable. So I'll just hit enter to skip past any terrible songs. This is, this is Beak. Beak is amazing. Uh, he's still making music. Um, he's a super cool guy. Uh, he, his real name is Chris Del Camino. Okay. Um, so it looks like. What we need to do is, oh, well now there's this thing here. There's actually a, a class that wraps it called CMST. This class manages CMS emulation. Um, yep, so there's M generator. So there's two M generators. Okay, oh, okay, that's cool. And it looks like it, uh, oh, so it actually handles the detection stuff, which is nice. Um, so I can actually use that code of his. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just do write data and write address. Just, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's look at the implementation for that. Okay, so looking at the constructor, it actually doesn't do anything it doesn't actually it doesn't actually instantiate them um oh like hold on a second okay yeah it's just it's just an array so okay so th those just those just get automatically constructed uh when we construct cmst okay that's cool let's let's uh, go ahead and use cmst I, I like that i like that we have these nice little right data right addresses uh, these write on imps are kind of interesting to me. Um, handle unimplemented writes in our address space. I'm really curious about that. Um, we'll see where uh, we'll see where that goes. All right, let's start writing some code. Okay, um, so when we're going to be uh, constructing those. So we have our SAA1099 device. So what, what's that type? Uh, CMST. Let's do that. Just make a just make a pointer to it. And when we're instantiating it, we'll do that down here. Easy peasy, making them both here. Let's just leave those puts in there. Okay, and let's look at the uh, the port code. So from where we're looking here, uh, we're write data or write address. Um, yeah, I have ports 220 and 222, 220, 222. Um, Okay, so write data, which, okay, so we pass the address in as is. Um, it, it does the shift and and to see which one it's supposed to be writing to. Uh, likewise, write address does the same kind of thing. Um, okay, okay uh, I think what we can do for these then is uh, write data, write address. Okay, yeah, let's see what we can do with that. So here is a uh, write data. Uh, the address is going to be port. And I have to be read. 
integer x f f. Do the same thing here for integer x2, integer x1, we're going to be writing the address here. And likewise here for 0x3. Um, I'm going to leave my auto detect code in. Uh, hopefully his code is fine with that. We'll see. This is a this is all experiment. Uh, this is this is just what I do when I'm uh, hooking up a new emulation. It's surprisingly fast if things go well. If things don't go well, it's surprisingly painful. Um, but let's let's hope for. Uh, Something, something kind of miraculous here. Okay, uh, I believe that is all I have to do here. Um, all my reading, that is my code, that's not touching his code yet. I might use his code later. All right, so new CMST. Let's look at CMS play and see what we need to do with that. Um, as far as, so this other CMS emulator needs to do a thing where we device start it. Oh, we also have to have an X turn. Turn CMST, CMS. All right, let's see if there's anything that we have to do with regards to, it's like a device start. I don't think we do. I think we just generate, we just construct it, just start writing to it. I like that. Um, now I do have, I do see one thing that might, Okay, so there's direct generator access. Okay, so I will have to reach in and get those generators to actually get them to start uh, to make some sound. So, I'll have to remember that. All right. Okay, so we got to use this generate frames. Okay. Okay, so instead of these buffers, um, let's do some floats. Oh man, this pains me so much. Uh, floats. Um, so samples per buffer times two. The reason why it's times two is because it's a stereo. Um, um, Sometimes samples is kind of a bad name. It really should be frames. Um, an audio frame, it's like a set of samples for get the number of uh, channels that you have. Um, so like if it's like 5.1 surround sound, you'd have six samples for a frame or for stereo it's two samples for frame or for mono it's one sample per frame um so okay we've got our buff zero and one and where are we gonna do another stuff okay here is the fun stuff here we are going to actually going to be telling it to write some audio to these buffers here so i think we need to reach in and see what i want to do uh so it's just called generator, and there's an index, and it's a function call. Um, okay, that should get optimized out. Then. Not, not to worry about that being a function call. Um, okay, uh, CMS zero. I believe that's a reference and not a pointer. Yeah, it's a reference. Um, so you can do it with a dot. And then we need to do generate frames. And here is where the fun begins. Okay. So they call frames. Good for Aaron. He's a smart guy. Oh, what? Generate frames. Um, buff zero. And samples per buffer. And I'm gonna, this is the gain, gain bad because it's floating point multiplication. Um, and likewise, we'll do the same thing for the second generator. And actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see if it, it, it no, I don't know. If they want you to, if this generate frames can does mixing or if mixing is supposed to be done outside of it, I'm doing it outside. Um, okay. Now this is where I'm. 
here's where I'm mixing them to the two together and given that they are floats um, I'm actually casting to n32 T's here um, I'm gonna take these casts out uh, because we're just gonna be dumb here and samples is our signed yeah so samples is our signed 16-bit integer so we're, let's we, we're gonna do our conversion here and um, yeah okay all right here's where we're gonna here's where we're gonna be converting from floating point to uh, integers here and the reason for this bit shift at the end is because we're adding them together and this is just having the volume of them it's kind of ugly but um yeah um okay so floating point plus floating point um now i need to see if it's going between um negative one and positive one or if it's between zero and one um Oh, the song that just started, it's uh, Indigo by Basehead. It's one of my favorite all-time uh, tracker files. Uh, let's go in. Let's let's start looking at this. Let's see. Let's look at the sausage being made here. I'm just looking for any hints that it is anything that is... Oh, this is the old thing. There. <laughs> this is what I want. All right, right data. Okay, so here's where it's generating frames. It's this times gain. Let's comment all this out. Uh, now this is interesting to me. The fact that Looking at all these 1.0 Fs divided by 32768 Fs, which is 16 bits, like 32768 is, yeah, that's the, that's a high value of a signed 16 bit. Um, this might be actually be pretty easy to convert uh, to signed integers, given that it's doing this. Very interesting because it's. L volume and R volume. Um, L, oh, those are those are signed in it. Okay. Um, I don't think we need to do floats because yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, because the the in, the left and right volumes are they're signed it they're signed integers, and this is just converting them to floats. Yeah. Okay. I am. Okay, well, let's look a little bit further here to see if there's anything else. Um, add voice. This. Pro yeah. Okay. So this L result and R result are um, those are floats. Um, so I think the, the, the internals of add voice might be a little different. Uh, okay. Um, let's 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 do these floats for now. But I am I'm conf I'm not confident. I'm optimistic that um, this might actually be able to be converted to signed integers instead. So I'm. Fingers crossed. Okay, uh, let, let's carry on the, the way this is. I took those. I took those uh, gains out, um, which is fine. Okay, cool. Anyway, um, okay. All right, where was I? Okay, I was doing all this stuff. Game was, you know, gains just whatever. Um, we're throwing it away now. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna leave it in the, in the function signature for now, um, just for fun. Okay, so. It's a, it's, so it's a sign value. Um, yeah, okay, so let's do this. Uh, 
Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so we're just multiplying times 32768. Um, I'm trying to think if I have to do any other kind of uh, casting or anything like that. Let's just see if that compiles. Um, okay, so looking at this right now, um, nothing's unsaved. I might actually be able to get some sound out of this. Uh, so let's go and build it. Let's make this bigger so you can see it. All right. All right, let's make the project fresh. All right. Ah, errors. Love the errors. Love to see errors. Okay. Oh, right, adder. Oh, nice. Thank you, GCC, for telling me what I need to do. Looks like this math is crap. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to cast some stuff. I thought I could get away with that. All right. Uh, all right. Go be uh, uh, By the way, um, this is I have a pretty old school kind of dev setup. I just write in Vim and I go to my console and, or my terminal and type make. Um, I don't use VS Code or anything like that. It's, I mean, I could even like run make inside Vim and have it flag my errors, but. I don't know. I, I I like this. This is this is how I like doing. It. It's weird. Like my day job, I don't do this. But like for hacking on hobby stuff, this is like what I like to do. All right. Uh, if I make that, okay, that error goes away. All right. Let's fix our stupid floating point math. Um, all right. Okay. So this is a float. This is an int. So actually I need to do this. And, and I don't like this because this is going to my mouth. And I cast all this. Bill now what what editor oh why you don't like it? yeah I mean yeah it's okay <laughs> like I'm mostly okay with that uh, I'm gonna cast it I'm gonna just do an old school C style cast uh, another great song Unreal by Hoffman All right, that should fix our problem. Okay, uh, we have a binary. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, cool. Um, I'm a little apprehensive about trying it, but I guess <laughs> we just got to try it. Um, I kind of hate to stop the song because it's such a great song. Um, and I can't. This is DOS. I can't like pause it and alt tab over to another thing. I just gotta quit. Thanks, Mini Miniclub the computer. Uh, I'm glad you're fascinated. I'm glad this isn't completely boring because this is like kind of in the weeds and a bunch of stuff. Okay, all right. Um, here's what we're gonna do. Uh, we're outside of Cubic. Um, I've got my thing here, and I am going to make program. So. I have uh, another Raspberry Pi uh, Pico set up here as a Pico probe. And the Pico probe is a firmware you can load onto your Raspberry Pi Pico um, to act as like a debugging probe. Um, it's hooked up to these software debugging pins on the RP2040. Um, and it lets you kind of get into it um, even when it's running other code um, and you can debug, you can watch variables, you can watch memory, uh, you can program new uh, code onto it. And it's um, really awesome. And it also has a, a serial console out, or serial UART output um, and it can convert it to USB. And so that's how I can see the output of what the PicoGust is printing out, which is really neat. So let's run break program and it's gonna program it. And okay. And that is a all Good to see. Um, 
starting core one CMS. Now there is a something funny with the CMS. And here's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to do this put chart here. And the reason why I'm going to do it is to see if it's actually getting to this because there is a bug in the Pico SDK or something like that, where sometimes if you start up the second core, it will halt. Um, and when you're doing uh, programming over the Pico probe, I can physically reset it. Um, so I'm going to see if it's in this kind of weird state. I'm going to do make program again, see if I see any slashes on the screen. No slashes. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset the computer and see if I get slashes. Yes. And, oh, do you hear that? It's trying to generate audio. Do you hear that buzz? That's interesting. Okay. Um, I'm going to take out this slash stuff and make program again. And then I lost my reset button on my Pico. I might have to, to uh, fix that real quick. We may have to do that live here. Um, okay. Reset the machine. Okay. We've got the buzz. Interestingly enough, the buzz sounds the same as before. All right. Um, let's see. Oh. Oh, this is cool. This is crazy. It doesn't really sound like it. Even the tempo is weird. It's not really. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, I'm going to mute that for now. Um, that's really interesting. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Um, all right, so we're, we're getting some kind of sound out of it, which is awesome. I am actually pretty stoked to hear actually hear something that is sound, and when you're actually playing audio on it, it's it changes. That is really cool to see. So let's see if it sounds different now because there's not much sound in this part. Yeah, it's just it's just buzz. Okay. Um, fascinating. Okay. All right. Um, now, there's some stuff here. What I can do is I can see if I'm starved for time. So this CMS audio begin thing, it's basically timing to see how, how many milliseconds or microseconds it takes to render our numbers of frames. And um, if it goes above a certain value, we can see if it is um, um, like we're running out of time because we only have a certain amount of time to render our audio. If we run out of time, we'll start getting you know, stutters and stuff like that. Um, so I'm going to put this debugging code on, on comment it, and it's just going to print those that stuff. And let's uh, program it and watch the console. Reset. Um, 322 microseconds. That is, a, that's actually really low. Um, if it gets above. I'm trying to remember what my target is. Um, let's see what samples per buffer is. Uh, 256 samples. That's pretty small. Um, but I have a, actually have a feeling that this um, neighborhood that we're in, the 320-ish, might actually be low enough. Um, let's, yeah, we got the we got that sound again. Um, let's play. Oh, say, okay, yeah, it's going higher now, now that it's actually playing something. Oh, how do you quit these games? Uh, I'm just going to reset. I just want to play something else and see if it does any differently. I'm going to use a, play some VGM files. Okay. Uh, let's 
play use my master XT by Freddy V. It's Monkey Island. Yeah. It's like, like some stuff's happening in time with the audio. Uh okay. Alright. Beat that. Okay, um, yeah, and interestingly enough, it's hovering around 1069. So I'm not hearing any stuttering. Um, I would, if I was running out of time, I would hear stuttering. Um, so I'm actually kind of surprised by that, given the uh, floating point math that's happening here. Um, so what next? Okay, so I'm getting some audio out of it. Um, the default state of it seems like it's making a buzzing sound. Um, it should be quiet. So that's telling me that something is kind of weird. Um, oh yeah, the bu I just I muted the audio. It's still there. I just turned it down. Yeah, it's still there. So like if I like reset the computer, it goes away for a second and then it, it starts as soon as the sound core starts back up. You're welcome for muting it. Um, yeah, where do I go from here? Okay, um, let's just double check that we're using it correctly. Um, so we got our float, our buffers here. They're floats. Um, they're just arrays. Um, I'll generate frames and I point to both of them. I render sa samples per buffer. Float is thrown away. Um, for each of those, I'm doing this bit shift stuff because it, the, the samples are interleaved. Uh, because uh, it's just it's just raw bytes so I'm reading this is the left left information this is the right information um, so this is kind of how you, you stride through two at a time um, not seeing anything strange there I'm gonna play with increasing the number of samples per buffer uh, Let's go up to 1024 and see if that changes anything, changes any of the quality of the sound or anything like that. If it doesn't change the quality of the sound, that tells me that um, something I'm doing something wrong with how I'm interfacing with, um, with it. All right, and reset the computer. Oh, it sounds different now. And this is, it's, Rendering four times as many, so that this is fine that it's doing that. It's periodic, which is, in, yeah, it's periodic sound. Um, oh, huh. CMS not found. Okay. Wonder what happened. Hmm. Okay. Um yeah, I think I'm using it wrong. Ah oh, man. Okay. Let's uh let's see what else we can do here. Um Just making sure I'm not doing anything funny here. All right, um, so this is how generate frames works.
I am kind of tempted to start. Um, hmm. Golnan says, are the changes in sound just based on how many voices are playing than what's actually playing on them? Uh, that's actually a good question. Um, yeah, I think there's... Because that... Yeah. Let's go through some of the, some of these songs and see if there's anything where we can get a good view of how many um, voices are actually playing at the same time. That's a good question. Yeah, it doesn't sound like polyphony, even broken polyphony. Yeah. Uh, let's try that one. Yeah, one. Yeah, no. Hmm. Yeah, it's like you can kind of see the volume of the uh, voices changing the buzzing sound volume slightly. Um, yeah, this one has a lot of voices in it. Okay, yeah. All right. Hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, yeah, I'm very curious about that. Um, yeah, I wonder if we're doing anything wrong here. Um, let's make sure that there's no, no other kind of initialization, co initialization code that we need to write. Um, CMST doesn't take any arguments. Um, I'm a little kind of wondering if we need to also implement this, but all the CMS code I've used before makes perfectly fine sounding audio without having to uh, handle these unimplemented writes. Um, the right data. Um, this should be fine. Um, yeah, I, I'm giving it the actual address, not like a base address or anything like that. But due to this math, it doesn't matter which one we're doing, which way we're doing it, if we subtract it from the base address or not. Um, this, though, it's... Okay, yeah, no, that's... Right adder. Okay. Um, oh, hmm, it says seven here. I kind of think we need to. Um, yeah, let's let's change this to from port to port minus base port. Um, all right, yeah. Let's see what happens if we do this instead. Kind of grasping at straws here, but uh, it may actually do something. Get that again. Mute that for the second. No. Yeah, it's safe. Okay. That is all right. Um, Okay, I am kind of tempted to give up for now. Um, I might want to 
send some questions to Aaron just to make sure I'm doing things the right way. Um, and if he has any hints on uh, what to do about changing it to a signed uh, integer instead of a floating point, um, I don't really see that being a problem. Um, let me just see if our conversion is OK. Um, doing that um, well we're actually hold on hold on we might be truncating the most significant bit here because uh, this is a 16 and then we uh, yeah we might okay yeah let's try this let's try that that might help um, I don't foresee it being an amazing fix but it might actually do something all right still sounds terrible yeah I know if, it, if, it, if we were dropping the most significant bit it would still sound something like actual music no okay yeah no. okay all right that wasn't it Hmm. All right, well. That wasn't the problem for that. Um, let's just make sure, let's go back here. Uh, right, data, that's... Yeah, okay, 220, 222, 221, 223, 0 and 2. Yeah, right data is zero and two. Uh, one and three are right address. Um, okay. Um, looks like right unimp is used for uh, auto detection, which we don't have really have to mess around with. Um, yeah, I'm kind of stumped here. And. I don't really want to. Um, yeah, Bill Nott says one thought would be to try to figure out why even with silence it's buzzing. Yeah, that shouldn't have anything to do with the register rights, right? Yeah, it, right. It shouldn't. Um, yeah. So that is a good question. Um, yeah, let's make sure our, let's make sure our, our, our buffer is like actual actually being written into, um, and we're not doing anything weird with that. It's a array. Um, yeah, generate frames. Dest, it's a pointer. Oh, it's in. Oh no, okay, that's. It's interleaved stereo. I think that's fine. Um, yeah, hmm, okay. I think that's all right. I'm just trying to make sure I'm not do I don't have I'm not having any like crazy compilation options that make floating point unusable or anything like that. I don't think that's possible. Um, no, that can't be it. Um, uh, are the gains supposed to be zero before stuff sets it otherwise? Um, that's a good question. I I did a quick search for gain and it's only like it, it's not. Yeah, let's let's yeah let's undo all those times gains that I'm doing here. Let's yeah let's let's do that. Let's it's what's an extra multiply really gonna hurt us right? Gain 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 gain. gain. I mean. Yeah, it doesn't look like gain is is able to be. Uh, it's not set. Yeah, it's. Yeah, the gain isn't per, per, 
programmable, it looks like. There's volumes. Uh, there's these voice volumes. Uh, but the, like the global gain doesn't seem like it's uh, something can actually be set uh, via register rights. Yeah, it's global, not per voice. Um, oh, v VD95 says, thank by the way, welcome VD95. Uh, uh, CMS cards play noise when they're not initialized. My clone card does that. Oh, that's interesting. Um, I've got a CMS card in my 386 over there on the other side of the, of the room, but getting that set up and running would be uh, kind of painful. Um, but that's interesting. Uh, VD95, what kind of noise does it play uh, when it's not initialized, is it is it like is it anything like this, or is it uh, something else? <clears throat> Let's see. Um... Gain is set to one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and take those gains out again, just cause. I don't think there's anything else that's funny. Uh, okay, it's kind of similar, a bit less noisy. Hmm, interesting. Um, yeah, I'm just wondering if there's any other kind of initialization um that's some random noise stuff um that i'm missing i'm not seeing any other kind of initialization code that i need to be calling from inside this that's dandy uh, it's fairly fairly basic Well, I'm just looking through, seeing if there's anything else that pops out at me that makes me wonder if it's uh, if I'm using this wrong. And yeah, and I don't think it really pops up. Um, I think this is going to require a lot more trial and error, and I don't want to bore everyone that is watching this. Um, to, to deal with that and uh, not be willing to just start playing some more playing some more demos um, maybe maybe hack a little bit with some some uh, stuff with uh, IRQs on uh, the gust mode uh, to get some games running better uh, I was kind of playing around with some stuff in uh, some games uh, before I could yeah let's do that I, I feel like shifting gears here because uh, I'm kind of not really getting much of anywhere with this right at the moment um, and I'll, I'll bug Aaron about this to see if uh, he has any kind of, uh, any, any insight into this. Cause after all he wrote it and, uh, yeah. And also I'm going to give, give, uh, take a stab at converting it all to, uh, integer or yeah, ints instead of floats. I like ints. They're precise. All right, well, I'm gonna call this uh, a bit of a wash. We got some sound out of it. Actually, I was really happy to see we actually got sound. That was really the number one thing I actually wanted was to get some kind of sound coming out of it that had some relationship with the sound I was trying to play. There, there is some some relationship, that something's there, but it's not exactly right. Um, so I'm kinda, I'm willing to call this a win. I, I call this a win. Uh, so let's kind of switch gears. Uh, I was planning on stopping the stream in about 20 minutes. So yeah, let's, let's mess around for about 20 minutes here uh, on some Gus stuff. Uh, let's well, let's, let's uh, kind of switch gears over to Gus. And the nice thing about the Gus code is that you don't have to reset the computer every time you flash it. Uh, I'm going to mute that. Yeah, OK. Cool. All right. All right. So there's a few games that still have problems on Gus, on Pico Gus. And uh, yeah, Gus. And uh, there's some, I actually, someone just uh, a, while ago, a little while ago said Pinball Dreams wasn't working. Um, I, th I don't know if that was a GitHub issue or Git. 
or if it was a uh, something on Mastodon or I don't know. Let, let's try let's try out Pinball Dreams and let's see if that's working. Um, Pinball Dreams is kind of interesting. It's a pretty straight port of Amiga game, so it has a whole bunch of uh, uh, what's that? I can't get all these pinball games straight. It might be this one. Let's see, PD. Uh, no, no, this is not the one I'm thinking of. This does not support Gus at all. Uh, no sound card. Well, okay, this is, hmm. Maybe there's a special Gus version of it. This is the one I'm thinking of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe, how do you quit this? Reset. <laughs> I'm gonna do a full screen capture here. Let's look at the other pinball games I have. One of them is 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 strange, and I just want to see if it's having the same problem. Um, I just have one called Pinball. P oh, Pinball Fantasies. I think that's the one. Yeah, and there's mods. I bet this is it. Yeah, okay. Some very Amiga sounding mods here. This seems like it's working. Let's play a table. Now, this is running some uh, code that I fixed up. Yeah, I'm calling this working. Sound effects are fine. The music is fine. All right, I'm gonna quit this. All the F keys, Control Q. Can't hit like control amiga amiga. Well, how do I quit this? <laughs> Die! Alright, reset the computer. Yeah, no, I, yeah, the sound quality is is much better compared to Sound Blast, especially on earlier games like that where they assumed that there was hardly any time to mix. Um, some of the uh, like epic games as well, like uh, One Must Fall and Jazz Jack Rabbit. That, dude, those are later games, um, but even then, like the Sound Blaster mixing code is so noisy. Yeah, terrible quantiz quantization, quantization noise. Um, a big problem that I've been having is this game called Hocus Pocus. Um, that that uses um, Ultramid, and one thing I have found is that it comes with a its own built-in version of Ultramid that isn't quite as good. Um, so running Ultramid from the actual Gus uh, installation works a lot better. And if I just call hpgrvs.exe, because normally there's this hocus g dot uh, bat that runs its own version of Ultramid, which is no good. But let's try this. I, I've ma made a few changes uh, to IRQ support. Let's see if this is any better.
<laughs> so this game is really interesting the way it uses the Gus. Um, the MIDI music, which you can hear right now, is standard MIDI. It's loaded in, DMA'd in uh, at the very beginning, all, all the patches for it. The sound effects are actually DMA'd in in real time. It kind of works the same, the first versions of Doom did. Um, instead of mixing in software um, a certain number of uh, sound effects and then pushing that via DMA, it actually DMAs in all the sound effects that it wants to mix. It hardware mixes them, but it DMAs and plays them simultaneously, like in real time, which is kind of cool, um, but it's kind of problematic. And the Doom uh, audio engine moved away from that. Um, but some games, like this one, you know, weren't uh, ever updated. Which I think is really interesting. So it seems like it's working okay. Uh, let's go ahead and play. It's not the best game, but it, you know, it works. So far, so good. How do I jump? There. Oh, it froze. Okay, it's not perfect. Yeah, it just froze. So, yeah, there, there's something funny with this one. Um, yeah, uh, Jorge Carvalho says, is it uh, on YouTube, uh, is it possible to push these upgrades to GitHub, please? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, they're, they're still, I'm still kind of tweaking things, but as we can see, they're not, it, it's fixing some things, but it's not fixing enough. It has fixed some of the um, regressions in some of the, like some of the demos I was playing uh, weren't working well. Um, so I'm not, I probably should go ahead and, and push it uh, up to GitHub and make a new release because it has been a while. Uh, VD95 says somewhere I read the Gus cards had a DMA bug that were causing lockups on Doom. Yeah, that's why they updated the DMX library to use software mixing. And this is, yeah, this is a lockup <laughs> that we're getting. Um, I'm a little bit tempted to put my Gus in and see how well it behaves. I've got my real Gus right here um, in static uh, plastic because I do not want to zap this thing. This thing is very valuable to me. I've had this since 1990 something. Um, and yeah, I don't want to pay eBay prices for another one if I ruin this one. Um, yeah, so this is an example of a game that isn't any better. Um, now, it's interesting is the DMX library. Another game that uses the DMX library is Raptor Call of the Shadows. And I think that came out before Doom. And it was that also uses the previous version of the DMX library. So let's check that one out. Um, run set up make sure it's set up for this card grab soldier sound grab soldier sound and you'll see like if you if you know your dos games you recognize this setup program this is like kind of the same setup program that doom uses so you can definitely see the heritage in uh uh in, in this so i think that's pretty cool all right it's uploading the samples right now So far, so good. That enemy ship is so ripped off of Wing Commander, it's crazy.
So far, so good. Getting those sound effects. Yeah, so I believe the sound effects in this one are streamed in in real time. Another game that's also a shooter, a uh, top-down shooter, is um, is Tyrion, and that one has problems. Uh, but let's see if the latest fixes uh, makes it any better. Uh, what's it called? T2K. I never know which one to run. Let's just run Tyrion. Yeah, uh, yeah. General Remedy wasn't that great on the Gus. I agree. Um, yeah, it was better on the the plug and play due to uh, the fact that it had a lot more sample RAM. But yeah, it's like it doesn't hold a candle to like the sound canvases or anything like that. Um, so there is no sound, no sound at all. Uh, let's run. S Wait, did I just hear something? No, I didn't. That was just me imagining things. Unable to initialize Gravis Ultrasound. You probably do not have a Gravis Ultrasound. Oh, interesting. Oh, it says thing about Ultramid. Um, maybe that's it. It's talking about a sound loss report, which is kind of funny. Okay, there's music. Now the sound effects on this are totally clipped, and they're also clipped on real Gravis. Oh, nope. <laughs> now it's playing through all of Gus Ram. <laughs> okay, yeah, so that one's still broken. Now there's another game uh, that does the same kind of thing, and I want to see if it's any better. Uh, it's uh, Star Control 2. And that's a pretty early Gus game. Yep, <laughs> sounds good. Ship it. Uh, this is an issue with my graphics card. For some reason, the... Uh... The palette is weird. Oh my god, this is terrible. I'm tempted to swap in a different VGA card right now because this is so bad. But we're here to test sound, not here to test uh, um, my VGA card. So let's actually play. All right, we're going to Earth. shot. Come on, go back in. Oh god. This thing turns like a cruise ship. Here we go. Yeah, so DMA did in those samples just fine. Alright, that works. Let's go to the space station. Oh, oh, oh. 
Okay, that's fine. Uh, 1595 says TIE Fighter work with Pico Gus. I have never tested it. So I don't really know if TIE Fighter works or not. And I, I'm trying to remember if I have it installed in this machine. Yeah, it's, <laughs> the pallet corruption is so bad. Like, Matrox cards have good a, a, a good... Uh, good reputation, but for some reason, they're not the best under DOS. Alright, so the problem that we see is going to show up when we go to the moon. So if we go to the moon base and start scanning it. Yeah. Hear that? It's not supposed to be happening. And it just does that forever. And now it's playing through Gus Ram. Gonna hear it now. Yeah, so there's definitely some note off uh, commands that are missing somehow. So, yeah, not the best. So it does stop when you quit the game. All right. Um, hmm. Yeah, V95 says it's supposed to use a rep outs instruction to write the pallet because the errors are not waiting for the card to be ready on each value written. Oh, that's interesting. Um, okay, let's see here. I've been showing you a bunch of stuff that's broken, which is like what's taking up most of my attention is the stuff that's broken. Um, yeah, it looks like I don't have, um, yeah, X-Wing or TIE Fighter on this machine, unfortunately. Oh, I have X-Wing. I don't know... What kind of support this? Oh, it has it, it comes with Mega M. Interesting. So I think it's trying to emulate a sound canvas. Um very interesting. Let's see what happens. Uh, oh, I can only use EMS. Uh, well, let's just see if we can do anything about the sound card. Uh, custom setup. Music Roland. Okay, yeah. Now, Mega M, I've never really tested it. Um, so I'm a little bit worried. <laughs> um, no, I don't want to read, read me. Let's just see. I'm, I'm curious. Let's uh, get EMM 3D6 installed. We only have a couple minutes left. Uh, I just want to see if this does anything. I'm really curious now. Installation unsuccessful. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, I, I'm not very well versed with Mega M um, because most games that ran it didn't work very well. Um, and actually just used, I had a Sound Blaster 16 and a uh, Gravis Ultrasound. I used the SB16 for almost everything that wasn't like super Gus specific, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, so yeah, anyway, um, I'm kind of willing to call it here as the uh, uh, end of a stream. And uh, definitely kind of showed you some stuff that is still needs to be worked on uh, with Gravis Ultr Ultrasound emulation. And a lot of it has to do with the way that... Um, like a lot of it has to do with IRQs. Um, uh, there are voice-based IRQs, and I have a feeling that the IRQs for ending the voice that tells it to like 
some, some and I'm not sure exactly exactly what's happening. I'm probably have to do some bus captures. I've got um, some bus some logic analyzers that I can plug in the ISA bus. Um, one of them is actually kind of interesting. What I what I use, it's a um, it's the original uh, Pigus or Pygus. Uh, when I had a, a grab us like a uh, full size uh, uh, Raspberry Pi hooked up to it, so um, normally I would have a Raspberry Pi hooked up to these headers, but I have all the uh, ISA bus command or bus signals hooked up onto uh, this Dream Source Lab. It's a 32 channel uh, logic analyzer, and you can capture basically do a full bus capture of the ISA bus. Um, so kind of my next step I'm probably going to do is for the things that are problematic, um, things like when I see, um, yeah, when I see things not, uh, not working, I'll do a capture and look at it and see what exactly, like what Gus commands are being sent to the card. Um, seeing when any, uh, kind of, um, uh, IRQs are supposed to be hit hitting and if they're hitting at the right time or if they're not happening at all. Some, sometimes I've seen problems where like there's multiple IRQs and they kind of jam up against each other and uh, things like that. So this has been an invaluable tool um, without having a logic analyzer with this many channels. I don't know what I would have been able to do. Um, I started off with this one, uh, the Kingst LA 2016. And uh, this one is a 16 channel analyzer. And it, it's, it gets you most of the way there, but you miss a few signals. If you do anything with DMA, you need more than 16 channels because you want to capture all the address bits. You want to capture all the data bits um, and all of the DMA signals. And there's three you really need to look at. And having a fourth one is really helpful. And then there's IRQs and IOW, IOR. So it really adds up fast. So I had to get a 32 uh, channel logic analyzer. And this has been really, really helpful. So yeah, that's kind of like the next thing. Uh, video 95 uh, asks, uh, should it be possible to use a Raspberry Pi as a video card with the Pi Gus? Um, yeah, I bet it would be um, because um, I originally based it off of um, I first kind of when I first got the idea to to make the Pi Gus, um, I googled around and looked for other projects or doing any, anything that was similar. Um, and there's someone um, on that I found on GitHub. And he has a YouTube channel as well. I'm trying to remember his name. Um, and he had a project based on the Raspberry Pi. Um, and he has one called Franken Pi. And um, what he has, it's it goes through a FPGA and has a, a on an ISA card. And it you connect a full size Raspberry Pi up to it. Uh, but his original project was just connecting the ISA card directly, um, not even using level shifters. Uh, like the Pi Gus and Pico Gus do, and just using resistors. And he had, I never got it to work, but he had a VGA core for it. I'm really interested to see if it actually ever really worked. Um, and yeah, it'd be really interesting because like there's, like you could probably pull the VGA uh, emulation out of DOSBox or or MAME or some other kind of emulator or PCM or 86 box. There's so many different uh, sources out there. So that would be pretty cool. I keep thinking about wanting to go back to this, um, to using, um, like here's my original PyGus card. I still have it. It's still populated, has level shifters on it. Um, and there's the header that you know, regular Raspberry Pi hooks up to. Um, so this, this could work. Um, and I'm kind of tempted to go back to it just to test it out because um, I moved over to the regular Raspberry or to the Raspberry Pi Pico pretty quickly uh, once I realized um, that the Pico was so much cheaper and so much more available than the full size Raspberry Pis. And since the supply issues for the Raspberry Pi are slightly easing up, I'm a little tempted to see what's possible to do on a Raspberry Pi uh, because I am running into some pretty big issues with uh, being able to react to bus events fast enough on the Pico. Um, I'm also thinking about trying to experiment with overclocking the Pico more than I actually do now um, to, to do that. So those, those are two things I'm really interest, interested in, in checking out is seeing what I can do on a, a full-size Raspberry Pi. I'd have to spin a new board. There's some signals that I, I knew nothing. I was so dumb. In fact, it it says, I don't know if you can read it. It's, it says very dumb prototype V1. I was 
had no idea what I was doing. I just said, okay, let's just hook these uh, level shifters up and see what happens. <laughs> so that's pretty, uh, pretty crazy. So yeah, anyway, um, I don't know, but doing it, it now that I know what I'm doing a little bit more now, um, getting it to, to work on the, on the full size Raspberry Pi might be a kind of interesting. I've got a few of them to play around with. I got Raspberry Pi three and four. Um, so I don't know. I'm going to hack on the Pico version for a while. And I think overclocking is probably the next thing I'm going to try and do and see if it improves things. I actually got some pretty big improvements uh, when I enabled link time optimization um, in GCC. Um, there are still, like I inline the hell out of everything. And I think fixing things with inlining really, uh, or having link time optimization kind of do inlining for me uh, intelligently in some of the code I haven't written, that that's helped some as well. So there's, there's definitely some headroom there. And I think maybe overclocking will help that as well. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much it for the stream. It's been a couple hours. I'm really happy that you all have been here with me and, uh, I really appreciate it. And, um, yeah, thanks for everyone. And thanks for all the chats. It's been uh, really good and keeping me encouraged, uh, when things with CMS weren't working perfectly. And, uh, so yeah, I hope to do another one of these. I don't really know exactly when, uh, my personal schedule is kind of all over the place. So yeah, thank you very much. Uh, thanks for everyone chatting. 40K Ram, Snoop Jedi, VD95, uh, Mini Kubla Computer. I don't, I, sorry, I don't, I don't know how to pronounce your name. Uh, so yeah, really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for, uh, for following along. And uh, maybe I'll see you around some other time. Okay, bye everyone.